Hey guys, welcome to another episode of PB Garage. In this episode, we're gonna be looking at the Audi B7 two liter oil pump balance shaft assembly. Uh, this episode is specifically gonna be looking at how it works, what goes wrong, and what options you have in terms of replacing it. Um, I have another episode about how to get it out and put it back in. It's fairly involved, but at least I'm gonna show you some options as well on, on what the most cost-effective option is to the most uh, expensive option. So let's get into it. So here's some of the carnage that comes with removing one of these oil pump balance shaft assemblies. This is my 2007 Audi A4 BWT engine, two liter oil pump and balance shaft assembly. So here's how it works. You have your crank up here, spinning some pistons and doing some stuff. On the end of that crank, you have a sprocket with a chain that comes around this tensioner, comes around this oil pump here on this sprocket, and your oil pump in here uh, obviously feeds this whole assembly through pilot galleries and, and feeds the shafts back there, and then out to the rest of the engine and feeds the engine, then back down to uh, the oil pan and then picked up by a suction uh, pickup tube and continues that cycle so that's fine that chain continues around to this next sprocket which is for your balance shaft assemblies so this sprocket is connected to a shaft connected to a gear another gear shaft gear another gear two other shafts and these are actually disconnected here in the middle they're not connected at all um, that's why it kind of loops around so that way you can feed these two shafts which have the balance shafts on the end of them. So these balance shafts are to counter the inherent vibrations that a four banger happens to have. Uh, so here's how mine failed and I don't think it's attributed to uh, oil or lack of oil changes because this casing looks pretty clean um, and, and I think it really comes down to just a design flaw to be honest. So. Uh, when I was driving around at operating temperature from about 800 to about 1900 RPM, um, I'd lose oil pressure, the red light would come on, and as long as I had the RPM above 2000, everything was fine. After a little while of driving, it started to make a little bit of noise, whether it be at idle or driving around at any RPM, and I used a stethoscope to check the engine bracket or just around poke around the motor. And on the engine bracket, I could really hear something screaming at the bottom of the engine, uh, lead me to believe that it was this. So upon removing it, you can see already just how far off this guy is. This guy does not want to do that. It wants to be nice and tight like this guy. And this is what was happening. So because there's so much tolerance here, between the journal of the shaft and the bearing surface, I would have just oil pressure oozing out of here, just gushing out. And that's what would cause my little oil pressure. Uh, not until I started getting some RPM up, spinning that oil pump at the front, it, it would start to build up some PSI, overcome this tolerance, and my oil pressure issues would go away. But this was still an issue and still floating around like this. So that's how they fail. Um, if you leave it too long, you can see uh, some of my teeth actually started to chew away at each other in here. There's, yeah, right there, you can see two of them. I'm pretty sure that's what's at the bottom of my oil pan there, is some shards of something. And that's one way that they can fail. This can continue and then ultimately just explode. You have all your pistons and your crank right here. So if one of these gears decided to get loose and end up in the bottom of one of your rods, you know, game over real, real quick. So I cut this in time. Um, you'll also notice these weights don't go back to, the, to their natural position. And that's a part of the way you install it. You want them to be able to return to their natural position. Uh, this is my replacement unit. You can see they always end up going back down. Doesn't matter what you do to them. They're moving around freely. So yeah, this thing was uh, definitely on its last legs and uh, caught it just in time. One other thing to note is that as this thing's wallowing out, obviously it's just filing away at this aluminum. That aluminum turns into little aluminum dust that ends up in here and obviously not good for the rest of your components. 
this is a bit of concern of mine. I don't know what the rest of my components look like. I'm obviously going to clean this up as best I can. Flush the oil after about 10 minutes of running. Put some fresh oil in again. Um, just to make sure I clear out all of those contaminants. And that is still a bit of a concern of mine. Thankfully, by the time I process this video, I'll have run probably about 20,000 kilometers. And I'll let you know if this thing is exploded or not. Anyways, that's this thing. All right, so here is my cheapest option. This is a junkyard oil pump for about $15. And I know what you're saying. Blake, what are you doing grabbing an oil pump from an A4? It's probably in there for that reason for a failed oil pump. Actually, the two liter is such a terrible motor that it's in there for a myriad of reasons. And this is just one of the reasons why it might be in there. Anyways, it took me about an hour to take the oil pan off and then, you know, mess around with these shafts, see if I was happy with the amount of tolerance that they had, check that the crank spins, there's no actual failure, so it's good to pull. And once you have this on your bench, what a lot of guys do is they grind this uh, sprocket off, which connects the back half of the whole assembly. So by cutting that off, it essentially disconnects your balance shaft. So these guys, end up just as dead weight they, they don't move which is perfectly fine yes this is going to cause a little bit more vibrations in the engine yes this is going to cause a little bit more stress on other components of my motor but it's not going to fail and then it completely ruined the engine so you know pick your evil um so essentially this is just a completely redundant sprocket and gear they just kind of sit there just allows the chain to continue around your tensioner that's supposed to be here and uh, allows you to maintain your oil pump uh, and and pressure and everything so this can just go right back in as is put on a new tension for good measure uh, some new sealant some new bolts if you want i'm going to reuse mine just because and that's the best cheapest option in my option 1b is what i'm going to call it is to buy one of these good used oem units online kind of hard to find surprisingly in about 350 to 400 dollars so if you have the means to be able to grab one of these from a junkyard for about 15 bucks do it so your second option is going to be a freewheel option is what i'll call it so what they do or what vis or wasa has is a freewheel sprocket and what you can do with this option is leave this whole pump assembly bolted to the underside of your engine and all you have to do is change the sprocket out. Now, essentially what it does is it disconnects the shaft here from the sprocket. Instead of doing what I did over here, it just makes that disconnection right here. And this will be disconnected from the sprocket. And as the chain comes around, it continues to rotate the sprocket, but the shaft remains inactive, making the rest of it inactive. So that's about 187 to $250. So fairly easy. Doesn't work though. If you have my issue where you have the oil pressure issue, if you just if I just threw that on, I'd still have my oil pressure issue, which would cause other issues later on down the road. So not an option for me, maybe an option for you. Option number three is to replace this with an eBay Chinese rebuilt unit for about eight, nine hundred dollars. Taking a complete gamble on a Chinese unit, definitely gonna want to throw a freewheel sprocket onto one of those. Not my preferred option. Option number four would be to go to an OEM unit. An OEM unit from the dealer is about $4,000. Enough said. So three times more than my car. Still want to install one of these. Not necessarily something that people want to do. Option number five would be to go to the IABED uh, oil pump that he makes. Not He doesn't make. He, he makes them out of good course. And what he does is he actually presses out these shafts these balance shafts and all that stuff. And he plugs these bores in with some plugs. So that way your oil galleries aren't bleeding excess oil. It's great and all. You put a freewheel on it as well as you, if you want, probably not relevant because it's already disconnected. But the problem is that he will only accept good cores. So he wouldn't accept mine if I had to return it. Therefore, it's still a $900 option for me. And I could barely, I couldn't even find one available for sale. The listings are there back ordered forever so not really much of an option at this point in time so the sixth option will be what a lot of guys try to gravitate towards and that's going to backwards to the 1.8 t oil pump assembly so the 1.8 predecessor 
to this engine, the two liter, the 1.8 never had ballast shaft, shaft assemblies. They never had vibration issues to begin with. I don't know why they introduced all this nonsense. Anyways, besides the point, 1.8 oil pump. It's about the size of my fist. It replaces all of this assembly. You gain about two quarts of oil by deleting all this and just putting that little 1.8 oil pump. That's good for up to about 400,000 kilometers. It's a great solution. I love it. I, I, I definitely wanted to do it. The problem is, is that there's a lot of other things you need to consider. 1.8 oil pump, you need to drill and thread, tap your blocks. That way you can mount it properly. The 1.8T oil pump also has a different tensioner so you have to drill and tap your block to install that tensioner uh it doesn't have a second gear over here it just has one gear here for the 1.8t oil pump and what that does is that you need a shorter chain and a different sprocket off your crank to get to that sprocket you have to take your harmonic balancer off you have to take your timing chain cog off you have to then pull your uh, sprocket off the crank and press on another one you, you can do it with the crank in the car some heat applied here and there and, and hammer it on whatever it is but you're still into a timing belt you're doing your water pump because you're in there and all this stuff you're into a service position there's a pile of additional work just to get there you're not done yet by removing this whole assembly and putting the 1.8 into it you have your oil pressure regulator feed here that disappears the 1.8 t doesn't have the oil pressure regulator located in the actual pump it's located in the oil filter housing adapter over here so you can't just grab a 1.8 oil filter adapter and bolt it onto your 2 liter you have to get a 2 liter to 1.8 t liter oil filter housing adapter custom made about $400 and then you can bolt up a 1.8 liter oil filter housing adapter that has a pressure regulator in it some guys say you have to maybe shim it sometimes you don't I don't know you get to use 1.8 liter or large oil capacity filter oil filters which is great more oil as a pile of additional oil um, and then your pcv valve system uh you also have to adjust that way you can mate it from your 1.8 t uh, pcv system to your two liter pvc system you also have a supply or return feed i'm not too sure there's not enough information out there that you have to block one of these two you have to block so you don't have excess of oil pressure loss at the end of all that some guys still report low or high oil pressure issues. Now, some guys manage to successfully do it, but there doesn't seem to be a definitive answer on what the exact equation is. There's a, a kit out there for $1,200, uh, maybe $1,500, depending on the day and the exchange rate and all that stuff. Uh, but for me, there's just too many variables to consider uh, making a swap like this. But not worth it, in my opinion, for the just a dumb 2-liter engine. I'd rather swap an entire 1.8-liter engine in than try to go and retrofit a 1.8-liter pump to this 2-liter system. Um, guys delete these balance shafts all day long. They've been doing it since, you know, the dawn of time and, and never had any issues. So... That is what I am going to do. And those are all your options. So I, I think I, I think they're all your options. They're all the options I know of. If there's something that I missed, uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment. I'd love to answer them. We try to answer every question that comes up on our feed. So definitely drop us a line if you liked it, hated it. Let us know one way or another. Hope this helped you guys. Enjoy your day.